Hello, I would like to inform you that what you're about to listen to are the views and comments from the host and guests and only reflect their own views and not the community as a whole. I hope you enjoy the podcast and Eddie, play that banter section. How do we banter anymore? How do we ba- Do you know in 2024, I don't know if people can banter anymore. See, I, I just kind of say things that are out of pocket and I hope they're not too out of pocket that it gets me in trouble. <laughs> I, I forgot you use young people talk. I forgot this. Yeah, uh, okay, I, I say random things. Let me just say that then. <laughs> I, I, I just say things. I open my mouth and I speak. Yeah, that is very true. Yes, I think that's how most humans work. No, 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 but there's like, I can't, I can't explain how little of a filtering process goes on. The second my brain thinks it up, there's no delay. It comes out of my mouth. And see, this has been um, troublesome in my past sometimes especially when i say things like slay in a professional environment (laughs) it happened a few times while i was working last year and i think my manager got kind of got used to it luckily you know i was in corporate yes um but the section we were in was chilled enough that it didn't really matter it wasn't like i was speaking to the highest ranking people but you know still i had to have some kind of formality day today but sometimes the word slay just slips out you know it's got such a vice on me i mean all i'm hearing is you're just a human person yeah fair enough Hello everybody, this is the Ed Talk About Podcast, a weekly podcast about Comic Con, cosplay, and everything else. I'm your host, Eddie, and this week we are doing an unscripted podcast, first one of 2024. Woo! Yippee! Uh, yippee, yippee. Uh, joining us on the podcast is Honey of Honey B? Honey dot B? Yeah, honey no, B. No, well, actually, it's H dot Honey B, isn't it? Yes, it is. Everything else was taken. <laughs> so this is the best I got. So you couldn't even have honey dot B. You couldn't have. Mm-mm. No. Okay. All right. Okay. You couldn't have honey underscore B. You just. Went... I don't like underscores. Okay. Okay. That that's a really <laughs> me thing. I hate underscores. Um. I prefer if everything is all together or with a full stop. The underscore just takes up too much space and makes it look too disjointed. Can you tell I have autism? Anyway, moving on. (laughs) Autism! Yeah. Okay, that's fine. No, that's, yeah, 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 I get that. I get that. Um, uh, What was I going to say? No, I was introducing you. That's it. So, uh, we're doing an unscripted, very unusual, because one, it's the first one of the year. Two, I've only got one guest for the unscripted. So, this is going to be very interesting. This could get very, very interesting. But on that, but before we get that note, Honey, B, no, B, that's what I call you, B. Mm-hmm. Reading off screen is really weird. Anyway, so B, how are you? How have you been the last seven days? I always do a welfare check. Oh, the last seven days, actually pretty okay. I handed in a pretty big deadline at uni last week, which was stressing me out. I lost so much sleep over it. I cried over it so much. But I think I did really, really well Well, in the end. And after that, um, I haven't had many classes. So I've mainly been recovering, trying to sort out my living space, trying to do some spring cleaning in the middle of winter. But, you know, spring cleaning still. Actually, you know, relatively, relatively okay. Thank you. What about yourself? Oh, uh, yes. How I been? Yeah, no, I I keep saying this. I I remember putting a uh, note on this on on social media. I have been in such a really good place for the last oh, like eight, eight to nine weeks. Yeah. And I, I'm somewhat in the back of my mind. I was talking to a friend about this. I was like, mm. the, my mind going, this could all fall apart any day now. I'm I not looking. I don't think about it like I that. Know, I'm like, so worried how bad the crash will be. Cause you know, when you get such a high, I'm like, Oh, I feel good. I'm invincible type of thing. Mm. And yeah, so like, just for like, yeah, like I'm going to hit the ground. But to be fair, I like recently I've had, um, I would have said some devastating news at work, but I was able to handle it. I was okay. And yeah, I'm sure it's not going to really hit me until when it actually happens later in life. 
Yeah. Um, I'm sure you could put two and two together. I, hang on, I've not lost my job or anything like that. I'm just saying other things. Okay, are... that's where my mind went to. <laughs> I just, I just realised that. And I went, uh, no, but um, yeah. Oh no, I can mean I could talk about. I have lost my job before. I got made redundant. Uh, oh, eight years ago now. Wow, eight years ago. Yeah, I came back. I came back. Back though. I know. I yeah, because I uh, basically what happened was I lost. I got made redundant. Came back from Canada, and there was a load of projects I was meant to be getting on with. Then all of a sudden, they got all put on hold. Uh, and they brought me into a meeting like a day or two afterwards and they said so we're making the department redundant we're just you know no. dismantling it I'm like, oh okay and then basically i remember like years later or months later they said to me they said yeah you took that news not how we expected i went what do you mean by that we said we expected one of th- one of three things was it three, three things it was like either you're gonna burst into tears you're gonna yell at us Damn, what have they experienced before to have them prepared for these options? Yeah, no, that's it. It was one of those two options, definitely. They didn't expect the third option of emotionless Eddie. (laughs) And that's what I did. I just gave them nothing because I went... uh, Basically, my mind was, one, I need to process this news, but two, it was like, I'm giving them nothing. They're not even going to get an emotion out of me, even if it's just tears. No, for sure. (laughs) So yeah, so if I go quiet, it's because you have you have crept into that domain of you deserve nothing from me, mm, and I, it's you, a good reaction to have. Yeah, because they people, they can use rage against you. They can use many things against you, but if you give them nothing, yeah, they can't get you. They can't get me exactly. They They're, can't get you. They can't even get that out of me. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Nuh-uh. Oh dear me! No, so yeah, I've been so I, you know, like I said, I've been I've been in a really good mood. I'm I, I, the fa- my famous the other catchphrase I use on this on this podcast seems to be is full disclosure. I'm also still editing photos whilst we're doing this podcast, so I'm trying no to worries. multitask. But I'm sure That's I can do. Fine. I'm sure I can multitask. I can. I mean, multitask. I can probably whack out my lovely graphic design work that I got to do for my lovely idol group who is performing <laughs> at AnimeCon. <laughs> oh, I I, um, I bought my ticket for that. I, I I'll see you there. I'll see- it's going to be our last ever shows because one of our members is moving to Japan in April. So unfortunately, we will be graduating, which means every opportunity that we have to perform we're taking it um but yeah very exciting very exciting indeed yes um okay what so what what's this dance group um it is called jinshin kiss we are a love live uh cover group because we love love live we love our little girlies um more specifically the subset of the aquas girls called guilty kiss so guilty obviously means guilty and junshin translates to innocent or pure because why should we be guilty we have done nothing wrong as you can tell that's quite a well-practiced spiel um but yeah so we're gonna be doing a little dance um we Make are a love get down tonight people. get down tonight <laughs> indeed um we're performing at the after party as well which is like very a very new opportunity um and yeah i'm just really excited for it please tell me you knew the song i was singing i do i do I was like, Fuck for that i was just on like i was like in a trajectory of what i wanted to say so like i wanted to acknowledge yeah. you but i didn't acknowledge you very enthusiastically for that <laughs> it was fine no, <laughs> but to, to be fair everyone else is doing the exact same just guy if we just ignore him, he'll just go no, away. No, that's not <laughs> what I'm trying to say. Are you sure? Are you sure? Yes, I'm 100% certain. But I really appreciate you telling me, asking me how I'm doing because Don't part, of, yeah, no, because part of this goodwill is that I keep mentioning this on the podcast, but this world tour of Manchester I did uh, mm. and the photos I've taken out of it, most of it's from my other branding. Uh, yeah. So if you like your, how do I put this politely? If you like your shiny people, um, yeah, g- go to HKC phonetically spelt dot uh, ah. com, and th- you can see some very alternative work. 
Uh, I, 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 again, I'll explain what it is. It's meant to, it was meant to be everything but cosplay photography, but it's ended up being a fetish site. I don't, I, I don't know. You know, it's, it's. I feel like an episode of Family Guy. You know, it's meant to go one way, and the story goes a, a different way all of a sudden. And I'm like, how, how did this get? Interesting. To, how did it get to? Spoil? To be fair, I've been binge watching Family Guy for the last week or so because there's, mm. there's a set season I've watched. And I've gone, cool, I know what I'm doing. I don't have to actually pay attention to it. I'm now to a set of scenes where I've gone, oh, these are all new to me. Hmm, I better actually start paying attention. Still oh, don't. that's where it gets you. That's why I always have to watch things that I've already seen. Oh, yes. Yes, no, no, yeah, yeah. That's why I have South Park, like, on repeat all the time. Oh, that, for me, that's Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Oh, I do love a good B99. Uh, good if, you're, if you've got Amazon Prime, watch uh, a show called Mom. That's about... That's right. so good, so funny. I'll have to check it out. Oh, it's good. yeah, it's about a uh, mother and daughter who are both drug addicts and alcoholics, and they try to get through life uh, uh, through sobriety, trying to like get off drugs. Oh, and bless. It is absolutely Alison Jennings. I think that's her pronounce her last name. It's absolutely amazing in that show. So it's um oh god, what's her name? Oh, now I need to Google it. Need to Google, Google, Google. Are oh, you doing it quicker than I am? No, I'm not. Hang on. Uh, cast. Oh, God. Uh, what's her name? What's her name? Anna, Anna, Anna Freyas. That's it. Anna Freyas. Fucking oh, hell. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. They are so good in it. It gets really good past season, I think, three when it really finds its feet. But yeah, it's so, mm. so good. Anyway, right. Um, now we've done well, Frederick, for both of us. Uh, if anyone's un- uh, unfamiliar with an, what an unscripted is, basically, I've got nothing to to really like talk about. Maybe we've got like mini subjects that I don't think would have been a full blown podcast. So we'll just talk about here. I've got something to say. B's got something to say. We'll take it in turns. We'll discuss over it, and then yeah, hopefully we'll. Work, yeah, this will be cheaper than therapy. That's basically <laughs> it. I mean, let's face it, it's, it, it's practically therapy. Uh, I mean, just to say I'm unlicensed, just to say unlicensed. So if if something happens, can't blame me, all right? I've told you outright, it's, it's unlicensed. Understood. <laughs> you have my verbal acknowledgement now. <laughs> Can you imagine going to court? But he told you it was unlo- he was unlicensed. But he said things. Uh, 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 <laughs> too late. Indeed. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Um, and also, i just got to say, uh, B's been an absolute um, wonder just to like accommodate my time and her, her own time. We are. I- I've literally been messaging her in the last 24 hours again. I've been so lackadaisical about recording this podcast. Uh, so I've just got to say thank you to B very much for, for like giving you giving me your time that's all i wanted to say and um, right back thank you for dealing me with me pushing back the time bringing it forward changing everything uh showing up without something to say then realizing i have so many things to say like <laughs> we're good we're good we are good that's Push good to here we, we will get through this one way or another one way or another <laughs> <laughs> I gave that one my full acknowledgement there. I hope you're. you're I, I really appreciate that. Do you know? I keep. News. I swear I got I got Tourette's. I swear I really do. Oh my goodness. Anyway, um, no, so I here's... think it's more similar to vocal stimming. Oh, what's that? It's when you um to kind of stimulate your brain, keep it awake, keep it kind of happy. You just kind of make noises. So I meow sometimes. It just you know oh. it, it's just it's worth it's worth reading up about. Um, it, it's really, really interesting. Um, I, ever since I became aware of it, I became so aware of how often I do it. I just get like random TikTok sounds on repeat in my head and I just say them like randomly mm. because they're on my head, in my head. Um, but yeah, I've become so much more aware of how much I've done it and how much the people around me do it as well. It's really, really worth, uh, looking, um, yeah, looking up and looking into. What, what, what was that terminology again? Uh, vocal stimming. I can send it to you in a DM afterwards as well. Please do, please do. Anyway, Will do. So, <clears throat> so here's what's been on my mind. And I think some people have... I don't know if I've mentioned this on the podcast. I've said this in per, in person, and I've definitely wrote this on my website. So, um, beginning of the year, I usually write a um, 
an article about who's not who's like appearing on my new banners and all that do you know you're on my banner is it my banner or my... i did not know time to look up your website <laughs> that's one extra view for me then um let's see if i can find it quicker than you do but ba- there I am. yeah banner. oh yeah you would literally smack bang in the, in the front you might yeah. be in an, you might be in an icon as well so i'll see if i can find that whilst we're chatting whilst we're chatting um what was i gonna say so in that i say um all the new banners all the new icons and also like places i'm going to visit now also written into that i wrote that i'm actually going to be like doing less comic con photography now this is not a prelude to say that i'm quitting photography or stopping comic photography or anything like that nothing like that but it made me think lately like especially towards the end of last year's like saying the phrase that kept coming into my head a lot was why do I keep going to Comic Con? Why am I getting out of it? Why am I still going? And I kind of want to know if anyone else has this this feeling yeah. inside of them about. Oh, I absolutely do. Oh, okay, good. So, so uh, again, I'll talk it from my point of view, and yeah, I just I just find that I've been going for over ten years now, and like I think was it ten years last year or last? No, twenty twenty two. I kept threatening that 2022 was going to be the last year of food and cosplay and that'll be it. But in fact, I kept going with it because I am so synonymous with that, with this brand that if I try to stop, I don't, and it may be like reinvent myself to a new brand. I don't know if people actually accept it. So mm. I, I might as well stay with it. And then all of last year, I was going to change the name to something else. But again, I felt like, ugh. I'm so synonymous with it. What, what am I trying to say? What I'm trying to prove? So I kind of s- stayed with it. But at the same token, I still have this urge in my head to keep thinking, why am I still going to Comic-Con? And I, I, I don't want to paint a picture that of someone of, uh, what's the word? Um, like exclusion or loneliness of, of sorts. But basically I go to Comic-Con I go there on my own. I leave Comic-Con on my own. When I, like, have... When I go to, like, the, you know, the after party of sort or the unofficial parties, I'm kind of, like, on my own flow between one group to another. And I was like, this is not a way to live, really, is it? This is not a way to socialise. <laughs> so I'm like, why, why am I doing this? What am I actually doing this? And, okay, you could argue... I'm doing this because I, I do enjoy photography. Don't get me wrong. I love photography. I love taking photos. And do you know what else? The other part of enjoy, uh, enjoy photography? Editing the photos and clearing your backlog. <laughs> Just saying. Just want to put that out there. Whilst... Not the fact you are coming. Fucking hell. I will fucking keep Crying. pushing. I don't know. I'll keep pushing that fucking uh, ham. Oh, no. Keep beating that uh, drum as much as I want. I don't I care if I can. your commitment to the bit. It's not even a bit at this point. It's actually, no. just, it's actually just truth, you know? Again, if, you know, if you're wondering why I'm ranting about it, go to the recent uh, FNC Room 101. I rant about it in there. But anyway, as I was saying, I love photography. This is why I've got two brands where I can do one photography, uh, one comic con cosplay stuff and one about for everything else. And yeah, so... Clearly, I want to keep on with the photography stuff, but I just kind of went, why am I busting my balls so hard at Comic-Con and recently feel like I'm getting fairly little out out of it? I'm not saying I'm not getting anything out, but I feel like I get so little out. And again, I was just re-listening to some of the older podcasts and like we had Charlotte Warch talking about the reach, the, um, the versus reach where the reach mm. from a cosplayer to a photographer is so disproportionate. And it does feel like, why am I, as a photographer, not getting the um, the recognition compared to a cosplayer? And again, not we're not trying to say cosplayers don't deserve it. Not saying that. <clears throat> we're more or less saying, why is there not just a, a, a an equal appreciation mm. from a cosplayer mm-hmm. to a photographer? And it's just so weird that there's such a weird... Um, discrepancy between two. Again, the other guest I had, Ch- uh, Chapman, he mentions that. Look, people follow person, not 
photography style. And absolutely, totally understand that. You know, if you want to, you want to follow that one person's, uh, you know, multiple multiple versions of that one cosplay taken by different photographers, rather than a photography style that anyone could appear and you may not like mm. them you may not like the characters things like that I totally understand that and that's i you know and i said at the time i've made my peace with that i totally have things like that but time to time that thought does creep in my mind every so often and that's me as a photographer do you get that as a cosplayer now i, I again don't want to assume too much but you're i'm assuming you're fairly new and young in the cosplay community so are you already at that stage have you thought about it or or are you? Do you just think about it like, oh, will this will this day ever come for me? So I'm relatively new. I'm relatively fla- f- flesh, fresh, but I've been around enough to experience quite a few algorithm changes, and it has fucked over cosplayers and photographers alike as well. So that's an external factor outside of people's psychology, which also doesn't contribute to anyone getting the exposure that they deserve um i've i've been around long enough to see the algorithm how it was six years ago i've seen it you know in all the this spread of six years and it's changed many times because instagram's also changed ownership within this time and the visions that whoever runs it might be different well they are different because the algorithm changed for a reason they're trying to push you know instagram then pulled in a shop and then they were just promoting everything that was linked to something that they could sell in an instagram shop and then it was the reels that they were promoting and then now it doesn't seem to be the reels anymore um long reels short reels everything has changed and it's very very tiring for um anyone to keep up with it because the co- many cosplayers cosplay is in our full-time job we cannot be at the beck and call of an algorithm every minute change that happens be aware of it be producing content for it it's just not possible and the same for photographers it's a hobby um, that stems from passion for many of them so we can't be slaves to all these algorithm changes so that apart from you know aside from people's psychology is also something that very very much affects what we get back for social media it's difficult for a photographer yes because cosplayers i'm not saying every cosplayer does this but sometimes in their excitement to post something they might uh slip up on the credits they might credit wrong they might not credit um it it's been happen it, it's happened it's happened yeah. innocently yeah. um but it all these small things lead up to photographers not getting the correct um or the rightful exposure let's say mm. um but yeah, like you mentioned, a lot of people do follow for people and not necessarily photography styles, which I, you know, I can see where that comes from because with photography photography accounts, it's more of a toss up. You don't know what you're getting. But when you follow a cosplayer, you might not know what character you're getting, but you know the person doing it is the same. Um, it's just so many factors that you have to consider and Many of them are out of your control or anyone's control because they might be subconscious. They might be, you know, someone might be doing this without real that is subconscious, never mind. Um, but it's it's difficult. And especially when it's a hobby and a passion, it's very close to your heart. Um, so anything that goes maybe not how you want it can feel a lot more um, because you're so passionate about it. Now I'm kind of losing my train of thought, but I started talking at a pace. No, that's <laughs> fine. I, I, can, I can jump back in if you want. I can jump back in. Um, uh, yeah, I think I need to gather my thoughts for a second. No um, problem. No, but yeah, no, I hope I said something interesting. Oh, no, absolutely. And I think that's there's a key word in there that you use, which uh, I think that's what hit me hardest, is that this is all a hobby to me. Mm. And I need to remind myself this is a hobby. And don't get me wrong, it's not like I don't want to improve it's my... It's easy to get caught up in everything. Very really. much so, it's, very it's much so. It's easy to compare yourself when you're seeing a million other photographers a day, a million other cosplayers a day. Yeah. It, yeah. So oh, no, it's like, I was, I was about to say, it's like, this hobby, for some reason, I've spent probably about... I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised if I really told, told everything up came close to about 10 grand. Mm. Because what was it? My, new, the, my latest camera I've got was definitely... So I say two and a half, three grand there on its own. I've had to buy two laptops because one died, another one uh, uh, came about. 
in total, I've brought about five to six lenses. Two of them are dead. Two, three of them are dead. So that's what I'm saying. That 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 money just accumulates, and like I have to remind myself that this is a hobby. And I yeah. said to myself, I'm not going professional with this. I don't want to um, make money out of this. I generally, I really generally don't want to make money per se. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I don't want to be paid, but it's not. I want to become a professional photographer out of this. This is not my end goal. My end goal mm-hmm. is. Do you know what? I want to go to Comic Con. I want to meet a cosplayer who may not be like getting the notice uh, uh, noticed by a photographer, or they made a, uh, a cosplay that went that, that I was like, "My God, this is amazing!" I don't care how many likes you've got. I want to take your picture, and I want them to feel great about themselves. But also, I think the underlining part for me is that I also want to feel good about taking photos, and it, it, you know, seeing you know. So, you know, majority of uh, cosplayers do like share my photos, tag me. It's great, and there's sometimes there's an the odd person that either doesn't actually share my work at all, and I don't know if I've done something wrong, or they didn't like my work, or whatever. But they keep like they keep coming back, which is I find it weird. Or you know, or you know, like you said, there's those misdemeanor people who do add a filter by uh, either on purpose or or by accident. Those who edit and. I can't imagine in this day and age, in 2024, that people are editing someone else's work without people's permissions, things like that. Mm. Yeah. So it's kind of like in the back of your mind, it's like, why do I do this? Why Why do I need to keep fighting this? But I mean, I can, I can only imagine in the paid world, it's exactly the same. Plus, if your work goes on the internet, it's it, in a sense, it's free for all. You know, you yeah. don't know who's taking that image and posting it on, on, on this. And yeah. But yeah. So I think to go back a few more steps about what I, from what I was saying, I think it's definitely about the hard work I'm putting in. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Sorry. I just, <laughs> I know this is an audio podcast, but you know that the history channel aliens guy with his hands out and like, he has a weird haircut and that. Yeah. Tweet, yeah. My hands were literally in the same position. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm Italian. I speak with my hands and you can't see my hands right now. <laughs> Right. Anyway, as I was saying, um, the amount of work I put into uh, to a lot of photos in the past, I'm now going. Do you know what? I can't be bothered anymore. And now I'm being very uh, strategic about which photo I give the full treatment. And there's some photos I go. Do you know what? This is good enough. Yeah. This is good enough. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just good enough. If they come back and said, oh, I was expecting the uh, the full lady treatment, the skin smoothening, the SFX, things like that. Oh, okay, sorry, I'll, I'll do that. And I won't say add an extra charge for me. I know other photographers will do that. Again, that's their prerogative, nothing to do with me, mm-hmm. things like that. But f- yeah, I'm just like, sometimes I have to like remind myself that actually I do want to get away from my computer and things like that. Um, to go back to my world tour of editing the photos that I've taken. I took right. Let's let's go and see. I took, um, oh, it's got the total here, three hundred and seven photos. Three hundred and seven. That's, that's practically that's pr- practically a Saturday thing. MCM, London. Mm. That is, and I'm just like, oh, I, 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 again, why do I do this? I'm not getting paid. I'm not like, I'm not putting this on like any behind a paywall or anything like that. I don't know. Deep down, I do, like I said, I want to make good photos for people. I want people to be happy. I want to be recognized for that as well. But sometimes I do say to myself, I'm putting way too much work for sometimes such little um, results, output type of thing. And I know that sounds very self-indulgent, but I'm sure the same for you for cosplayers. Like you want to put, you make a cosplay and you may put some like small detail in it that only you would know. And mm. in deep down, you're going to yourself, I want people to know that I did this little bit only for me, and I want people to point it out to me. But when people don't, you're going to go, oh, no one noticed it. I mean, I'm, I'm, do, do you know, yeah, am, am I hitting no, something? Absolutely. Um, so actually, a lot of people don't know this because it's not something I've spoken about a lot, though I probably should, seeing as that a lot of people are starting to feel a little bit out of touch with this hobby. Um, I actually started cosplaying about six years ago I did it for a year and a half and I lost touch of it I started to see it as a chore 
Mm. I started to lose my passion. I didn't want to do it anymore. Um, and I did. I took a step back. I, I didn't do it anymore. I I thought I wasn't going to come back to it ever. Um, but then in 2021, late 2021, um, I started cosplaying again. Um, and taking that step back was probably the best thing I did for cosplay um, because I came back, everything was better. I was very insecure about, um, you know, certain aspects of my cosplay, like my makeup, my wig styling. I came back and suddenly, because I, you know, consumed in the back of my mind so much um, educational content about make I, I I saw more makeup styles because you know just social media being exposed to them I saw better wigs I was introduced to new tools um I came back and you know I suddenly could do things so much better and with a new perspective and um so what I've started to tell myself to not if I'm starting to lose this passion it's okay it will come back if it's meant to and if it's not, then I had a good time with it. Um, so now I'm feeling that again, that it's becoming a little bit of a chore and um, it's becoming a little bit stressful and maybe it's taking up a little bit too much of my time and I need to cut back. And that's okay. I'm going to let myself take that step back because I know that when I do come back to it, I'm going to come back to it with more passion, more more growth. Um, and Yeah. Sorry to do this to you. When you said more passion, sorry, the I think is it Rich D. Grant? You know, more passion, more passion, more energy. More That's energy. it. Good, more right. I'm glad we're on the same page, right? Um, it's I didn't realize that, and and I'm glad you said out loud. I took a step back and things like that because i i in a sense that's what i'm doing this year mm. i'm not saying i want to take and a step it's okay too. yeah i'm not saying it at the end of the day yeah. like you have to put yourself forward this doesn't have to consume your life yeah and, and if it does you need to think about why and, and the fact that it really shouldn't yeah. it's a hobby it's a hobby oh, absolutely it's like so at megacon live london mm -hmm. I, I there were a few people that like i've never shot with who were uh, angling to say oh eddie you know check out my cosplay oh, that's cool that's great and and i know they wanted me to take that photo but i just went i'm here for me i just want to do what i want to do exactly yeah. it's two people it's a cosplayer and a photographer if the photographer is not like passionate about it then you yeah. know the cosplayer is probably going to end up being disappointed anyway yeah and like, exactly and i don't but i don't want to disappoint people but i've got to put my own no, exactly. Uh, my own mental the health first. do it too. Yeah. So why do you have photographers? Like, you're completely in your lane. You know what? Lane. That's a really good point. That's a really <laughs> good point that, that um, <laughs> cosplayers do it the other way around. Why should I? Yeah. Fuck them. Yeah. F no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Oh, let's not go <clears throat> yeah, no, well, 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 not without cons No. Sh no. Shut up. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> oh, how to get cancelled, Ed. How to get cancelled. Um today so yeah no I, it, it, like i said it's something that has been plaguing in my mind and and i think what really cemented it was that i had a really bad ordeal getting to mtm birmingham last year so oh, really? uh, yeah so very quickly i was meant to take i was meant to drive my car to my friends on the thursday and we were both going to drive up to birmingham mm -hmm. when i got into my car car died there was no battery no. so legit that night i had to quickly figure out how to get to birmingham via train because i want for the first time for ages i went Do you know what i'm going to drive up i'm not going to take the train up so yeah and this because i think there was train at the time there were going to be uh, train strikes and all that luckily they got postponed so that was fine right but the coming back to london was was still on i'm like oh god so i was like so many oh, I to pain coming back to London. I know. And and leaving it, Birmingham. Oh, that it's, time. yeah. The le do you know what getting to Birmingham is? Far, it's always the leaving. It's, it's always, always the leaving. Yeah, and it's always the Sunday as well, and Sunday yeah. trips oh. are always a little bit messed up. It's just crazes my mind. But yeah, it's just yeah. So it was like uh, the the permutations in my head of like, how do I get back? I can go back far this way, that way, and then take that. Mm. And, and it's like so many things, so many things, and it didn't help. That the Monday, so I ended up going back to my friend's place in Bristol, yeah, and then taking a bus back. That day on Monday, I was also due to go to see my neighbour Tutoro 
in the theatre, so I had to be back in London at a certain time. I was like, oh, no, because I also had other housework I needed to sort out. But yeah, but what I'm trying to say is that 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 weekend, Friday, literally, um, I looked like a, uh, you know, a smacked cow's ass. I literally <laughs> I had a face on. I just didn't want to take a photo. I literally didn't touch my camera, except for when I saw one Harley Harley Quinn cosplay. I went, yep, that's mine. I'm going to take that picture. Didn't turn out to be great anyway, but I was happy enough for it to be uh, taken and edited. Yeah. Saturday, I really went for it again. I went for my full, kind of went for like, oh, I'll take this, take this there. And then Sunday, I just went, do you know what? I'll take it, I'll take it easy. I'll take mm. what I want and things like that. And then that 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 realisation of, do you know what? I like this. I like this half and half. I like this. Do you know what? Take my foot off the pedal a little bit. So, yeah. Again, that's why Megacon Live, I was glad I wasn't given a press pass. Um, you know, Anime Con, I bought a ticket again, so I just do my own thing. So, yeah, it was just, I'm just doing my own thing. And like I said, it's not that like I don't want to take any more photos. It's just that I'm prioritizing myself for, for, for a change. And I hope people understand that. I really do hope that because, as I said, I'm not doing it to seem elitist or seem um what's the word like i don't like cosplayers anymore anything like that i think the one yeah. i really don't want to be seen as, as elitist but i'm prioritizing myself first than anything else mm. no i completely agree like it, it, yeah as you should like yeah. it, it's allowable again yeah. cosplayers do it cosplayers are selective with who they work with as well so why why shouldn't the the people who take the time to shoot them also do that one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Right, I think I've spoken enough. I think I've I've probably cancelled myself, but if I haven't, thank you for sticking around. Uh, <laughs> any angry messages, just send it to my DMs. But uh, <laughs> uh, I think we should let B ch- chat for a little bit, and I'll give him. Uh, yeah, let her have the floor, and if I've got any views, I'll I'll stick him in. Well, thank you for allowing me to have this floor. Um, so. There have been quite a lot of new conventions cropping up um, recently. We've had um, Megacon Live, we've had um, AnimeCon, and I don't know if they're necessarily new, but I've seen a lot more people attend their events, and a manga pop. They weren't on my radar before, they're on my radar now. Don't know how long they've been around for, don't really know much about them, but I just know that they're around, they're becoming a little bit bigger. but one tactic that I've been seeing recently from, um, I'm not pointing fingers, I'm going to say conventions in general, is putting down other conventions in order to market their own. We are very aware of everyone, at all of these cons' shortcomings, and every single con does have their shortcoming. No con is perfect, and no con, in my mind, will ever be perfect because there are external factors, there are internal factors, there are things that they might just not be aware of that is um, wrong with their convention. But I just don't think that this tactic is the best one because it, it creates a bit of a witch hunt. And maybe a witch hunt is what's needed sometimes to make these original conventions realize, oh crap, I'm doing something wrong. Um, but it's just giving, it's giving to me a very bullying vibe. It's giving, oh, if you're supporting that convention, oh, ah, don't even, like, don't even talk to me. Um, it's, it's creating this, um, at least to me, this impression that you can't enjoy another convention and you have to only enjoy this, I'm doing everything right convention. And, um, the truth is as well. A lot of these conventions we go to to be social, to meet people, to do these things. And while their shortcomings might be very apparent, be this an accessibility organization, things like that, at the end of the day, we can still go and see our friends. So are we really going to be, how discouraged are we going to be by other conventions bringing down conventions? Oh, I'm, I'm getting all my words jumbled now, but I hope you understand what I was trying to get at. Um, I think maybe it, it's sometimes good to say, hey, 
you know, I heard that this has gone badly with this other convention. And just so you know, uh, we're aware of it. We've sorted it out so you guys can have a better time. But it's not always giving we're doing this for you. It's a lot. It's often giving we're doing this because like I'm trying to one up everyone. The convention's advertising um, that they're better than other conventions by putting them down. Um, it's just, it's, it's, it's trying to one up everyone and it's not really doing it. It doesn't seem to be in the interest of, you know, creating a, a space that really caters for the people who attend. That seems to be, you know, a positive side effect of what they're doing. But at the end of the day, it's all just marketing. <laughs> um, and they're, they're quite brutal at times they're like well we know that other events have had struggles with this but actually we don't we're like super cool right <laughs> um it just seems very inorganic it's not doing it for a heightened enjoyment of the attendees it's it's mm. more to put themselves in a better position in the community's mind mm. and um i don't it, marketing it, it's it, it's just it's so not artificial but it's like oh they're really jumping on attacking other conventions and you know that's not to get too deep but that seems to be a very very big mirror of what's happening in the cosplay community right now everyone's kind of at each other's throats right now it's a bit of a sensitive time um uh you know sometimes it's warranted sometimes people are at each other's throats because people have genuinely done something bad. Um, but anyway, I'm straying from the point here. Um, yes, to summarize everything that I wanted to say, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay to look at an issue with another convention and improve it, but the way it's being kind of thrust at us, like, oh, I, we're so good. We're so good. You shouldn't go to that other convention because they're not as good. But we're we're the best one. We're, we we should be the big one. We should we should be you know what you love. We should be what you want to attend. Yes, we can want to attend your con, but it doesn't mean we can't still enjoy the other ones. There's no one con that needs to be the best, the only one that can be enjoyed. But that seems to be the vibe that these kinds of advertisements are giving off. And um, with that, I yield the remainder of my time. That was the point that I wanted to make. <laughs> Those are the points I wanted to make. Not, Hopefully you were clear. Not a problem. Just for that, for most of what you said, this is what I'm going to give you. Thank you. It seems my work here is done. <laughs> you may depart. No, don't leave. Don't leave. Don't leave. I'm right. not leaving. Don't worry about it. <laughs> no, I, I generally know what you're saying. Now, I think if anyone listened to my Patreon and listened to what I called it was like MCM versus MCL. I, London that is, London edition. What I did, I would like to think that's critiquing. That's more of a, um, I wasn't putting one over the other. I was making a point about, um, I think it turned out to be the value for money uh, type yeah. of aspect. And and I think that's, I would like to think that's not bashing one event to another event per se. Obviously I'm critiquing. I'm having going to, I said something that I felt, was a negative point about, but like you said, this is what I don't understand. What so what the main one of the main points I made in that po in that podcast extra was that I don't understand why MCL make a con large. Just in case anyone wondered what MCL stood for, why was that getting so much more praise compared to MCM? And I think part of it's because because since MCM got taken a vibe report, there's an I, I I subconsciously I don't know if people don't like a big conglomerate took over a small UK event i don't know and mm. I, I and it's like ah oh, it makes no difference in my mind because the event is still being held i can see more things more cosplayers turn up what's the complaint yes there's too many people turn up da, 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 da. again this is that podcast extra if you want to hear my views about that but a lot of things you were saying be honest to god i mm, you are so right you're just hitting the nail on the head it's just giving a bit of elitism, you know? Exactly. And elitism really, really bugs me. Like, day to day, just even outside of cosplay, in general, elitism is one of the things that I really don't have a high tolerance for. And putting down 
other things to make yourself feel better. I don't know. It's giving immature. But yeah, it just, there's other ways to market yourself. Um, We're all aware of the shortcomings of events. And, you know, we don't get these events often. So we want to make the most of what we have. And we've done that consistently year on year. And it's not like we're quiet about our frustrations. You know, after every MCM, there's a there's a wave of people who write to them to complain. And, you know, in all fairness, recently they've taken quite a lot of it on, especially considering the security, um, because we've always had problems with security. But MCM in October, I think people came away from that event being like, wow, like they actually listened. They actually improved things. Um, and I feel like as well in this putting down MCM behavior that we're seeing from other conventions, it's, um, it's also discounting their efforts because now they're starting to make an effort. I don't want them to stop just because these events are coming around and trying to upstage them because MCM will like, it's, it's kind of not a permanent, but like, it's a, it's a classic, like it is the biggest event. It's what we will get the most out of. People came back from Megacon and they were like, well, I could have done that con in a day. There was no need to do, to do two days of it. And if they ever do three, there's certainly no need for it because it was small. And MCM is the only company right now that's big enough to be able to put on, um, a convention of the scale that it does. I, I would argue, a day, at, <laughs> like I, I, I think you could have done that in half a day. Yeah, half a oh, day. Sure. I was only so busy because I was performing. Like, mm. it, I was going back to my hotel very often. Like, that's probably only because I was at the Sunborn. I was very, very close to my hotel, mm. so I could do that. But like, if I was really that busy with the con, I wouldn't have needed to at all. Yeah. No. Absolutely. And like you said. Like you said, um, which was, uh, again, I should have picked up earlier. You said, um, no Comic-Con is perfect. You're so right. No Comic-Con's perfect. You're never going to be perfect. Like, even if you go outside this country, people have grievances with um, Anime NYC. They have grievances with Fan Expo. They have, it's it's never going to be a perfect con. At the end of the day, you're managing an event with hundreds of thousands of people. I don't know if it's hundreds of thousands, tens of thousands. I don't know. I don't know what capacity is, but there's always going to be shortcomings coming from the venue, coming from the staff, coming from, you know, there's so many things that can just total up and be something that goes wrong. Yeah, absolutely. And to bash, to go back to your your original point, to bash a Comic-Con for the sake of bashing and bullying is absolutely out of order. If you've got critiques that you want to mention, absolutely, 100%, they are absolutely valid. And, Again, I was re-listening to some of the older podcasts just because I need something to listen to on the train to work. It's like the guest Tessagara uh, doc. They said that you don't. There's no point of boycotting a, a con just for the sake of it. Yes, share your grievances, share mm-hmm. what you didn't like, and allow them to grow and improve. Okay, if you don't allow them that growth, what's the point? What's the point of giving them feedback for you not to then experience maybe the good things afterwards? Type of thing. Yeah. And I understand that some people say, you know, boycotting is the only thing that's going to make them listen because they lose money. But the thing is with MCM as well is that they're so big that if a lot of people renounce going, I'm sure there's a lot of people who will just take their space and unfortunately not make that difference. Mm. That's just, you know, it boycotts can work. We've seen it recently in um you know ongoing social stuff sorry i'm just trying i lost my train of thought right now <laughs> no, so i don't know what you mean yeah words. um but like where you know a lot of people are currently boycotting mcdonald's and starbucks and st- things like yeah. that work because they have the quantities to make it work but i don't think in this community um we have the ability to make that work especially with mcm being one of you know the biggest event in the country and a lot of people don't yeah. if they want to see their friends if they want to you know uh, attend a convention this sometimes is the only one they can do and yeah some people aren't ready to give that up oh absolutely 
that's and, like, unfortunately, but, that is okay. Yeah, I think just to go back at that point, I think if you don't allow an event to improve, it's like I, mm, I'm going to be, mm, I'm very, very selective what I say. There's an event around. I'm sure you could work this out from what I'm about to say. <laughs> There's an event that's been recently started up, and I've not attended. And every time I've heard this event come about, there's been things I've got on. Oh, I've heard about this and I've heard about that. Mm, mm, eh, I'm just going to wait. I'm just a step back. And it's yeah. gotten to a point now where I've heard good things now and only good things. I'm like, oh, that's good. That's interesting. I might now start putting my name down for it. Now, you could you could argue back to me and say, now, why aren't you like supporting an event, a brand new event from the start to get it going? Yeah, but it's a risk. Yeah. But also, it's a risk that I might put in my name to something where I might then start getting cancelled for. So, why are you supporting yeah. that event? And all that's like, well, why not? It's a starter event. Why not? Or again, what? you just have to look out for yourself in these situations. Yeah, as well. like, yeah. protect yourself. Absolutely. And like, why is that? And just to flip on it, said, why aren't you going to that event to support it? Well, that's my choice to go to it or not. What? Mm. Why? Why should it matter? You know, to you, you know. Uh, you know, I'm just one person compared to the whole foray of 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 the Comic Con community type of thing. But yeah, no, uh, just I, I think we might have gone a little off topic from your from your original thing. But that's fine. No, but yeah, it's like I don't think I think there is a very fine line, to be honest, between positive criticism and just being an outright dick. You know, you you know, it could be it's one or the true. other. Yeah. So um, again, don't attack someone. You thinking, oh, they're just being a dick just to attack this event. Like, like I always from the uh, from Ted Lasso, Walt Whitman. Be curious, not judgmental. Mm-hmm. So don't don't go out of your way to, to crucify someone's opinion. Ask them why do you have that opinion. Talk to them. They may have not conveyed that answer in the way that you understood it, or they may have tried to project, project that answer to, to said um, people, you know, or to, to the community that they're, they're on about. Um, but yeah, it's, it's so, so weird. Uh, yeah, I just can't imagine people being such, such bully. And like I said, I'll say it one more time, clear difference between a positive criticism and being a dick. That's exactly that, that. right. <laughs> Oh Jesus! But yeah, oh God. Let's 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 end on a positive note. Let's end on a positive note. I, I know there's a whole calendar we got to go, and you can't predict that far ahead of it. But is there any event that you are looking forward to to attending? Oh, I am very very excited to be attending um, MegaCon in Birmingham because it will be our graduation event for my beautiful idol group that I mentioned in the beginning of this podcast. Um, but I'm very, very excited for all uh, opportunities that I have to perform with my group. Um, and despite the the bitterness of it being our final performance, I'm really, really looking forward to it because we have put so much work into everything that we've done so far. And I think it's going to be a really, really beautiful conclusion to this project that we've all been very, very passionate about. Oh, that is absolutely beautiful to hear. That's Thank absolutely you. beautiful to hear. And I'm hoping you leave with such good memories of your, your do I say crew? Yeah. Crew, good. Group, group. Girls. Yeah, yeah girls. Everything. Yeah, it's good. good. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm down with the kids. No, not like that. Not like that. Um, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oof. jeez. I got, uh, I got nine, nine, nine on speed dial. <laughs> Don't make me press the call button. <laughs> oh, that no, that's good. No, I, I, I should, I should be there. Make on Birmingham. I'm. There's some logistics I need to work out. Um, yeah, I will be mostly going as a con goer for MCL Birmingham. So yeah. Yeah, just just to, just to give you a, a forewarning, um, and anyone else, um, just to say my early thing about taking photos with people. Generally, if you really want me to take your photo, just ask me. Uh, yeah. If I'm really not doing anything, I will. But there are times when I just got. Do you know what? I just want to chill, enjoy, and uh, yeah. You know, this time is my time. That's all I was trying to say mm-hmm. earlier in the podcast. So, again, if you haven't quite hated me enough uh, or uh, you're willing to forgive me a little bit, that I hope you have forgiven me. But, yeah. Of course. <laughs> yeah, good. I'm hoping so. Um, 
No, that's good. Any other events that you're looking forward to? Or is it just that that one? Is- I think that one's the main one that I'm kind of, you know, aiming to give my best at. Mm. Um, I'm quite excited to see what Anime Con's saying, because that's going to be my first one. Um, and it's also their first London event. New venue, drum sheds, very interesting. Yes, I, I'm looking forward. I think that's one of the reasons why I'm going, because I really want to give it a try. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not... I'm not saying I'm a huge anime fan, but enough for me to go, I really want to go. And that's just a, going to Kongawa, I can't wait. Um, I'm hoping to do a podcast review of this, so uh, keep your ear, ears out for that for that podcast. So, yeah. Um, on that note, I'm going to end the podcast. B, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, just a full disclosure, we've had a te- many technical difficulties on my end, so my fault for like dragging this out a little bit if it sounds uh, dis- disjointed. But B... Uh, where can they find you on the social media? Should they want to f- see your your lovely dance routines or any other cosplays that you do? You may find me on Honeybee on Instagram. That is B with two I's, not any E's. H dot O N E Y B I I on Instagram. Thank you very much. Fan. Fantastic. If you go to foodandcosplay.org slash links, that's where you'll find all my social media links, such as threads, Instagram, Twitter, uh, and other social media pages. Foodandcosplay.org for your daily cosplay photos that I upload, kind of try to get back into doing some articles. If you go to foodandcosplay.org slash podcast, that we find previously recorded podcasts uh, with B and myself and with other topics, other guests. If you go to patreon.com, you'll uh, you'll find previously uh, recorded podcast extras that are done like like that's about half a year's worth now no probably about a year's worth now of a podcast extra unfortunately i won't be able to do a podcast extra for this episode so i'll try to do like a mega one next week maybe i don't know but those who are supporting me on the patreon thank you very much for your support it's not gone unnoticed it really has helped um so on that note i'm gonna say goodbye and b b is gonna say goodbye now so goodbye guys goodbye everyone thank you very much bye bye